I'd like to welcome you all to the launch of tonight's exciting new initiative, the Environmental Justice Network, Ireland. 21 years ago today, the United Nations Aarhus Convention was signed. It was designed to offer citizens access to environmental information, participation in projects that could affect them, and give citizens the right to challenge decision makers. With the Aarhus Convention being the only international convention on environmental justice, it is fitting that 21 years on, environmental justice has truly come of age in Northern Ireland with this launch this evening. Everyone in this room has an interest in environmental justice and in protecting the environment um, on the island of Ireland. And there's really three main reasons why we decided um, to set up this, this network. And the first is that there's been a groundswell in grassroots environmental campaigning. That, that's really heartening to see so many people taking an interest in these issues. The second, the second reason why we've set up the network is that there's a growing concern and frustration about Brexit and what's going to happen. What we want to do really is provide some answers to that that mean that environmental protection will be strengthened rather than weakened, um, regardless of what the outcome is. The other issue is that there's a knowledge deficit that exists in relation to environmental justice um, across the island. Today is the most significant development in the history of environmentalism in Northern Ireland because we have come of age, because so many groups, so many communities are facing massive problems from toxic gold mining to roads that aren't needed, we have the biggest pig factories, chicken factories in this part of the world. We have more illegal quarries. There's something wrong and today key communities are coming together with the support now of academics to establish a new order in Northern Ireland based on um, sensitivity to our wild habitats, to creating new laws around rights of nature and protecting communities from these developments which are destroying the water, the air and the land. The establishment of um, this new network of uh, activists and academics and NGOs and uh, decision makers is really important because it's for the first time bringing together on an all-island basis um, these diverse groups of interests uh, to work together uh, insofar as possible to um, pursue environmental justice, to take urgent and ambitious action on uh, the climate crisis, the biodiversity crisis and the, the various other environmental problems we face at the moment. Um, I'm Christine Gibson, um, I was a litigant in person, but I'm, I'm so pleased to, have to see this organisation being set up. I really hope it works. My biggest wish for this organisation is to have influence. That's the biggest thing, how, we, how this organisation actually brings together change. And we need an EPA, not having the only country in Europe without an EPA other than Greece. And that's really important to me. Today's contemporary environmental movement is marked by a recognition that ecology and social justice are inseparable. As Pope Francis wrote, a true ecological approach always, always becomes a social approach. It must integrate questions of justice in debates on the environment so as to hear both the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. A collective of grassroots people, organizers and campaigners and activists is absolutely fundamental. So it's really, really good for me um, to see the Environmental Justice Network being set up. Politics has failed us. Climate change is not something new. We have known about this for an awful long time. When we have the International Panel on Climate Change telling us recently that we have 11 years to mitigate against the worst impacts before irreversible damage is now done, then this is why networks such as this is absolutely crucial for the future. Hi there, my name is Kieran. Um, congratulations on the launch. Um, what I would like to see from this um, organisation is access for, for young people who, it's their future we're talking about, and if this can speak to them, then it can uh, reverberate throughout the community. So this is a really exciting opportunity, and uh, we need more accountability in, in our system of governance here. Many citizens fighting environmental injustice feel utterly let down by the planning and regulatory regimes that appear to have lost sight of the public interest they purport to serve. But equally, 
Many of our public servants who strive to deliver a good public service are constrained and frustrated within systems that espouse environmental protection but regulate its destruction, sometimes badly. The Environmental Justice Network aims to harness that energy of this growing movement of citizen planners, self-appointed regulators, reluctant interventionists and champions of common sense who increasingly feel forced to step in where we believe poor governance is giving rise to environmental injustice. One strand of this initial phase of EGNI programme will, will be to seek to work specifically with the communities of activists to gain an appreciation of the issues giving rise to environmental justice. And secondly, to create an evidence-based archive of those stories for qualitative academic research purposes. So, in conclusion, to the citizen activists and communities battling environmental justice, I would say to you, support the EJNI with your active participation and contributions that will direct the shape how best this network can aid you and those like you whose battles are yet to come. To the NGOs, I would ask you to embrace constructive agitation as a means of affecting environmental justice where collaborative models have all too often failed. For the academics, I would say now more than ever is the time for research and universities to adopt a more interventionist role. And to the central and local government institutions, I would say now is the time for strong leadership where putting right environmental injustices must replace the masking of what went wrong. I'm very fortunate that I live so far north that I look south on Northern Ireland. Um, I'm from Donegal and very proud of it. Um, I see this as an opportunity to allow me, coming from a quite crazy family, I think the, at one stage you had the name of being slightly mad and then we found that we needed to get mad and now I realize that there's a whole lot of other folk out there who will get mad along with us to protect the environment for my three children and their children and their children so that in 30 years time or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 or whatever, whatever it is, that they have a future. So thank you. The author Schumacher wrote a book called Small is Beautiful and he said, you know, to create a movement, um, it's all sort of impossible because movements create themselves. So we have a movement now. We have a grassroots environmental democracy that's happening and flourishing everywhere in every community from Belcoo to Ballinlay to Woodburn to Greencap. Communities are rising up and taking their own agenda against these corporations and a government that doesn't seem to care. What Schumacher said is that our job in the environmental movement is simply to put up the sails of the ship so that when the wind blows, we know where it's carried. And that, to me, is what today is all about. Now then, now then, now's the time We're silent partners in each crime Unless we find a different way And work for nature's rights today Work for nature's rights today But the old oak wood turns green again The old oak wood turns green the old oak wood turns green again, the old oak wood turns green.